What's up guys, GD here. So a few days back, one of the longtime subscribers and a friend of the channel, My Silent Blue, kind of commented on one of my videos that it would be great to share what is my approach towards the cabinet block and how I'd like to choose my cabs when it comes to you know creating tones. Uh, I've always been of the opinion that cabs sort of make up uh, you know more than 50% of your tone and choosing a cab can be sometimes more difficult than actually choosing the amp. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything about what I use as a technique to choose cabs and also we'll cover what exactly cabs are and its different features in the block uh, in, in a lot of detail. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down. This is probably going to be a longer video, but hopefully you guys to in, uh, get to enjoy it. Full disclaimer though. Uh, you don't get to see my extremely handsome face <laughs> this time because I'd rather have you focus more on the content than my pretty face and uh, <laughs> and my sloppy playing. So focus more on the content and hopefully you get something good out of this video. So let's begin. I want to cover in detail what exactly a cab block is. So feel free to skip around sections if they are not relevant to you or if you already know that stuff move to the section which is more appropriate for you so let's start from the very very basic if you're a newbie like me and you just bought the axe fx2 and you don't know what you're doing uh you might have the first question what exactly is a cab block the amp should be enough right now if you've ever used a modeler before you pretty much know what a cab block is but just for the sake of covering every possible detail a cab is basically a set of speakers or a housing of a set of speakers that is usually accompanied with an amp. Now an amp on its own doesn't really sound anything like an actual sound that you'll hear probably from a, you know, a preset or an actually an amp and camp setup. So you definitely need a set of speakers to kind of get the volume or get the output of the amp so some of the amps have the speakers in built in them like some of the fender amps or some of the uh, you know uh roland amps for example but if you go towards more of the premium amps such as mesa boogie or pv or marshall you will notice that the amp head kind of looks like the slim box and there's a bigger box which sits underneath the amp which has you know really fancy speakers and that is what is called the cab block now for the longest time i used to also feel that i just need to buy the amp head why do i need to spend a thousand dollars more or probably more to get that big box underneath the amp uh, i don't need that loud sound i'm just playing at home but no you definitely need a set of speakers which will make the amp do its job so to make you understand in a better terms think of the cab as the better half of an amp <laughs> which you can all relate to in real life i'm pretty sure so without the cab an amp is absolutely going to sound like complete trash <laughs> case in point i've got a preset here which has just an amp in it and i've got nothing else in the preset uh, the amp is a friedman hbe which in my opinion is a fantastic amp and it sounds pretty good even at stock settings so as you can see it's absolutely at stock i've got no cab in there but listen to the sound that sounds absolutely tinny and absolutely thin and it's got no body and no volume so case in point without a cab the amp absolutely absolutely doesn't work so you need a cabinet block now when it comes to the cabinet block in the Axe 2 you might ask which one should I choose then? Now in this part of the video I'm going to be showing you what is my process of choosing a cabinet. There are so many cabs in the Axe 2 and it can be quite quite confusing. So the first thing you will do is obviously put in a cab block next to the amp or you can put it pretty much anywhere after the amp. I'm choosing it here. Don't put it before the amp though. There are certain use case scenarios, but typically you would want the amp signal to go into the cab. So you put the cab block here and now you're presented with this screen, which is the options of the cabs. So let's start from the left hand side. You can choose a high ultra res cab, a normal res cab, stereo or a stereo ultra res. Now these are different types of uh, IR captures that have been done, I believe. I usually stick to the high and ultra res. These, you can find more about them in the documentation of the XFX2 manual. They are very simple to understand. Basically, if you go to stereo ultra res, mostly you'll be using the high ultra res and stereo ultra res. When you go to stereo ultra res, your cab will change to a dual cab sort of a setup and we'll come to that in a bit. But 
for most cases, you would want to start with a high ultra res sort of a setup. And now comes the other part. We'll cover the subsections in a bit. Let's look at the list of the cabs. Let's look at which cab you want to select. The first thing you want to do is click on this and then you're presented with this gigantic screen which has so many cabs to choose from and these are just the stock cabs. These are cabs which are com coming packaged with the Axfix 2 and people also believe in selling a lot of custom cabinets as well, custom IR captures as well, which do sound great in my opinion, but I personally believe that all the amps uh, can sound really good with the stock cabs itself. You don't need to go and buy you know, external cabs or IRs. If that's your thing, that's absolutely fine with me. But in my opinion, you can get a pretty good sound using just these stock cabs. And I've been running the channel for almost four years now, and I pretty much have been doing well with most of the presets that I've been giving out based on your feedback. So I think these are good enough. Now, let's look at a typical name, for example, and you might say that, okay, what do these names mean? I have no clue. I just bought the AxeFX2. I used to jam on a Fender amp earlier. And what are these things? These are absolutely confusing and I have no idea what's going on here. You're correct. These sound quite intimidating and quite confusing in the beginning, but there is a web page which can explain each of these. Now, for the sake of simplicity, obviously, and the sake of a shorter name, uh, the guys at Fractal Audio came up with these names, which kind of briefly describe the cab, but obviously they don't have the full detail in there. So let's look at the first section of the name, which is usually this number over here, which is usually these two numbers over here. So it says 4x12. You want to read this as 4x12. What does 4x12 mean? It means a set of four speakers, which are 12 inch in radius, in a cab box. So think of it this way. Most of the Mesa Boogie amps uh, have the cabinets underneath them, which kind of look like these. Most of the Marshall amps also look like these. So if you've ever attended a gig or played in one, and you've seen the amps on the stage, usually they will have a 4x12 sort of a speaker set up there, which is having basically four speakers set in a grid format. So similarly, uh, 1x12 means it's just got one speaker in there, and uh, 2x12 means it's got two speakers in there, 1x15 means it's got a 1x15 one speaker, which is 15 inch in radius, so and so forth. So there are different combinations and different possibilities here. Uh, that's what I like about the Axfix 2. It's very, very versatile and you've got some bass speakers in there as well, so which is very good to have. Now, coming to the next part of the name, which is this part, which is, it says basket weave, and then the third part says G12, H30. What does this mean exactly? Now, uh, as with amps, there are different types of cabs as well. There are you know, Marshall caps, there are Mesa Boogie caps, there is, you know, Celestian V30 caps and stuff like that. It all depends on what type of cab you're choosing. So the, it can be from a different firm or a different company, and it could have a different naming convention. And obviously they will sound different. That's because they are different. But in order to understand what each of these cabs means you want to go to a site which i can link in the description box below which is this page which lists down all the different types of cabinets used in the axfx2 now this is a pretty pretty exhaustive list so i will not you know spend too much time going through each one in detail but i would leave it up to you to understand what this kind of means so if you look at marshall cabs for example you will need you will see that the list of all the cabinets that are Marshall cabs in the Axfix 2 and the Axfix 3. I believe this list is combining both of them, but I could be wrong. So for example, we were looking for F034, for example. Let's look at F034 over here. It should be here. That's a 4x12 basket weave G12 H30. This is a 68 Marshall basket V 4x12 loaded with matched quad vintage 30 watt Celestian G12 black backs. T1281 frames and 444 55 hertz based cones. Now, it's a lot to consume, and I'm pretty sure you're as overwhelmed as me as well. But the key things to take here are that this is a Marshall cab, 
it's a 30 watt cab and it's got the celestian g12 h30 spe uh, speakers which is basically telling you that this is a particular type of type of speakers used in this particular cabinet now if you want to look at another one if you look at basket with tv mix for example this is the early 70s marshall's 1960 tv angle tall cabinet it's an angle cabinet they were angle cabinets as well i'm pretty sure they're still out there uh, with four 12 inch speakers this is a favorite for many XFX users. So just like that, you will have the descriptions of the different types of cabinets available in the XFX2. Now, another popular type of speaker is the Celestian V30, which is one of my favorites to use most of the times. So if you look at 1960B V30, this is F041. This is a straight Marshall 1960 loaded with Celestian vintage 30 speakers. Now, it's a type of speaker which is changing. The thing that is remaining constant is the 4x12 or the set of 12 inch speakers across most of these cabinets. Now there are 1x12s as well, for example. So that is how you would read the name of a particular cab. Obviously, you can't remember all of them, but you can always use that web page as a reference to go there and check what type of a cab that is that you're trying to use. Now there is a fourth part to the name, which is this RW. Uh, I believe this is the name of the company that uh, kind of did the IR capture. So I guess this is Redwire. And then you have ML Audio as well. And then you have Own Hammer as well. These are different types of uh, sort of firms that have been doing IR captures as well. And sometimes you will also have this 4x12 recto sm57 now what does that mean you can obviously go and look up this in the uh web page that i mentioned but this usually means that this is the mic that was used for capturing the ir and that typically means that you would not want to use a mic when you use this cabinet although nobody's stopping you you can feel free to do that but it's just an indicator that things like this things like this and things like this these are irs which were captured with a specific mic in my opinion so that's the all the information that you need to know other than that this is a pretty exhaustive list you still have that question in your mind well that's good enough how do i choose a cab for this particular amp now that's what i want to point out that there is a very handy guide which is available um, on the xfx2 forums i believe you can download it as well i've downloaded it it's called the yex guide to the fractal audio amps and it's a pdf and this is the one i'm referring to it's a very 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 helpful i cannot stress this enough if you don't have this you're missing out on a lot download this guide and it can help you at least to get started with dialing most of the amps now obviously it's not a magic tool that it will give you settings for every possible amp but it will at least guide you to the right starting point so what you want to do is go ahead and search for your amp in this particular manual sorry we haven't even got to any playing yet but this is important stuff so this is friedman be and hpe section that's the amp we're trying to dial in what you want to do is go in here and what you will find here is some details about the amp but you will also find a speaker which uh cabinet which works well with this particular amp so as you can see it's 4 by 12 g12 m g12 h or v30 speakers will sound good with this amp but that's that's not like the hard written rule you can obviously choose anything you want to choose as long as it sounds good to you uh, I was watching Leon's video yesterday about perspective and it really made a lot of sense to me. Like, you know, music is all about perspective. If you enjoy it, if it works for you and if it's something that you enjoy doing, don't go by the rules, break them and choose something which sounds good to you, right? Uh, there are a couple of other things sometimes mentioned as well over here. So 4 by 12 stock cabs, cab pack 10. Now these were links which were available earlier for cab packs that Fractal was actually selling out, uh, which you could download and which you could buy and then use that cab pack over here. I believe this link is going to go to a unknown page right now because Axifex 2 is pretty much uh, uh, sitting on the shelf now. But yeah, it still works for me. It's a pretty good unit. I like it. But what I want to call out is that when you read this, it's not just about the cabs. You will find a lot of other things mentioned 
about the amp sometimes there are starting uh settings that you can you know get you started with the amp and as to how to dial it but when you scroll down towards the end of every amps article you will also find something more about the cabs the be and hp pair will with well with a lot of speakers including g12m g12h and v30 so the uh, friedman is a pretty pretty versatile amp it can do a lot of things uh you know which most amps fail to do so as expected it's pretty pretty versatile and it kind of works well with a lot of speakers and a lot of cabinets as well so you can obviously buy the stock cabs if you have them you can use them as well but what we're doing in this video is different what we're going to do is use one of these speakers and see how it sounds so i've got the one by six oval cab selected right now let's see how that sounds <laughs> So you can see it sounds very boxed in and it sounds very closed and it doesn't sound very open and bright. That's probably, and I've not touched any settings yet, right? So we'll get to the settings part in a bit. What you can do is change to one of the speakers mentioned over there. Uh, let's look at a G12M and let's see how that sounds now. Now I can straight away say, uh, see that the amp has opened up a bit more it's a little bit more brighter and it sounds a little bit more kind of less boxy if i want to you know put it that way and we've not even touched anything in the amp uh, cabinet block or in the amp yet so try another speaker let's try one of the v30s let's say german v30 <laughs> You can see that this is slightly more mid-based of a speaker and it works well. It can give you that, you know, nice, in my opinion, you could get a nice uh, lead tone out of this one if you want to use this. Um, or let's try another one, one final one before we actually get into some more detail. Let's try one of the basket beeves or let's try one of the uh, 1960s one, let's say 1960 B V30. <laughs> That sounds really cool. I think this is one of the good cabinets in the Axfix 2. But you still might have that question as to, you know, how do you decide? They all sound good in my opinion. What's the best one I should be choosing? Now, the way I do this usually is obviously the EX guide is the starting point and it should tell you what to start with. But then that's not the end. I, usually I spend a lot of time trying to select what sort of a cabinet works well for the kind of tone I'm trying to dial in. Uh, if it's a uh, rhythm sort of a tone, it's probably going to be slightly mid scooped and it's going to sound a little more brighter than a lead tone. A lead tone might sound much more mid heavy and much more thicker and that kind of cuts through the mix really well. So it all depends on situation. But the tool that I use a lot is the looper tool. Now, I've covered this in the AxeFX tips and tricks video as well. You should watch that in detail. What you want to do is go ahead and put a looper block in here. And what the looper block helps you to do is record a piece of your playing uh, using your guitar, of course, and then you can loop over that again and again. Notice I put it in the beginning of the signal chain. So whatever you're recording is actually going to go through the entire signal chain. What this is going to help you to do is that you don't have to play the guitar again and again, again and again and tie yourself. You just record a piece and then you can use that loop to kind of, since it's going through the entire signal chain, whatever life changes you make will actually affect the tone of the guitar. So I've recorded a uh, small guitar part at the moment and I'm going to play that and I'm going to change the cabinet in live uh, in front of you and you can see the difference in the tone that's happening and that's really going to help you sort of decide what sort of a tone you want to really go with. So let's go ahead and play the uh, recording now. I'm going to play here. <laughs> Just lowering the volume so that you can hear me talking over this. And what I'm going to do is change the cabs now.
So you could hear there that, you know, as I was changing the cabs, you can actually hear difference in the tone happening in real time. And that's a really, really powerful tool to help you save hours and hours of changing and playing again and again. It will tire your hands and it will confuse you a lot. So what I use is a looper block and I play the part of the song that I'm trying to dial in and then accordingly change the cap to find out which cap kind of, you know, suits my needs. But that's not all, right? there are a lot of other things that happen in the cab. Once you've kind of narrowed down on the kind of basic sound you like, that's when you want to start tweaking other things to make it sound more appropriate. And we've not even touched the amp yet, right? So the amp touching comes a little bit later. In my opinion, I first try to dial in the high cut and the low cut. What is the high cut and the low cut? It's the amount of highs that are going to come through the amp. Uh, through the cab and the low cut is obviously how much of the low end is going to come through. So um, it comes by default at 10,000 and 20. I think this sounds pretty good in my opinion. But you can obviously tweak it and you will see that. The high cut will make the uh, the lesser the high cut, the more of the highs are gonna get cut. And it's gonna cut off more of the top end from your tone and it's gonna make it sound more dull. And the more you add it, the more brighter your tone's gonna be. Now, obviously something around 20,000 is the max. Sometimes it might not sound correct because you're going to be letting through a lot of fizz that comes from the amp. So somewhere around 10,000 usually works good as a starting point. Now, there are other things here like speaker size and deface. These are, are fairly advanced things, but for starters, you want to get started with just the low cut and high cut. The low cut, I usually set it to around 80 hertz as a good starting point. That way it covers and cuts out some of the booms that might happen if you've got a good amount of reverb in there as well. Now, when it comes to the mic, as I said, some of the uh, cabs actually have mics already pre-selected, so you might not want to mic them, but this one doesn't have a mic selected. So even if it does, you are feel, feel free to add a mic to it. Nobody's stopping you. In terms of mics, you've got a lot of mic selections out here, and uh, I'm not going to cover all of them. Some of them are bright, some of them are really bright, and some of them are kind of fat and they change the tone note in the Axe FX2 you cannot set the mic position I believe there are recorded these are like kind of at a specific position I don't know what but you cannot change the position of the mic but what you can do is change the proximity of the mic and we'll come to that in a second let's say I select the 57 dynamic mic here this is going to obviously color the tone a bit <laughs> You can hear it gets a little more brighter when I select the dynamic 57 mic here to kind of tame that down if you like the sound of this mic but you want a little bit more bass you can change the proximity what does the proximity do it brings the mic closer to the cab and that control can be done from here so if I play something and I increase the proximity you will hear the low end get you know get a little more amplified and a little more prominent <laughs> It's a very subtle effect. I would recommend use headphones to do this. Somewhere around two is nice. And I think it kind of does the trick when it comes to adding more proximity or more low end to your actual cabinet. Now, uh, the other thing that I want to cover is the room section. The pre plus drive is if you want to add drive to your speaker. That's something that I very, very rarely use. In fact, I haven't used it ever at all. So I'm going to skip that section. You probably don't need it unless you're doing something really advanced. We want to go to the room section and you can actually add some room level as well and you can add some room size as well. These are very, very subtle settings. You will hear them very nicely through a headphones. A uh, pair of studio monitors, you might not be able to differentiate much of it. The air is another cool feature which I tend to use a lot. The air is nothing but a setting which tells how much of the actual sound of the amp is going to come through the uh, cabinet. So I don't know how you do this in a real life scenario, but in this case, uh, you know, if I, the more I turn this up, the more of that 
fizzy sound that you heard in the start of this video is going to come through the cabinet. So at 0%, it sounds like this. And at around, I'm going to crank it up to 80%. And the air frequency also, you know, tames the frequency of what sound is coming through. So at 81%, you can see it's a complete overkill. But at lower frequencies, it can be a nice fizz sort of an effect to dial in sort of those 80s classic tones. And that's what I like about the air feature as well. Bring it back to zero. The other thing I wanted to, uh, to cover quickly is the stereo ultra res settings. Let's go back to the cabinet. Uh, the stereo ultra res, as I said, allows you to add two cabs in sort of a stereo sort of a setup. And uh, when you do that, it usually has the link uh, button on by default. What does the link do? It will select the same cab for both of these slots here. You want to switch that off if you want a different cab. So what you can do now is have the flexibility to mix and match two different sort of cabs and get a unique sort of a rich sound, which is possible uh, in a live scenario as well. But with the XFX2, it's just a click of a button. You don't have to go and spend thousands of dollars to buy another cabinet for yourself. So I've selected a G12M speaker now, and this is how it sounds. <laughs> We haven't even tweaked the amp yet, so let's go ahead and add some more drive. Uh, based on your gear, you would probably sort of know what sort of settings kind of work well for you. For me, this sort of a setting usually does work well. And there you have it. That's a pretty usable tone in my opinion. It's bright. It's a nice rhythm tone. And if you wanted to convert this into a more sort of a, a lead sort of a tone, I would first of all change the mics to a slightly more warmer mic. I believe uh, 87A is a more warmer sort of a mic. I might be wrong. It's more brighter perhaps. Uh, I think this is where the looper can also u87 is i believe is more thicker cut off some of that uh, top end and there you have it. it the tones much more thicker and much more usable as a lead tone uh, you could throw in a drive block in the front of course, you're going to add some delay, lots of delay and some reverb to make it sound more like a, a lead preset. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add any delay. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's do ping pong, which is my favorite. So bring down the mix a bit. And yeah, ping pong sounds fine. Let's he hear what it sounds like. <laughs> have it that's how i would typically dial in a sort of a lead tone obviously it's very very basic i would change a lot of more things and i'd probably add more gain who doesn't love more gain and you know play around with the cabs a little bit more uh maybe even reduce the proximity a bit or increase it a bit if you want a more warmer sort of a tone uh but that is pretty much what the approach that i use for using uh cabs uh it's it's a very detailed process and as you can probably tell from the video i've been yapping for a while so if you've liked this video so far you stuck around with me till the end here kudos to you congratulations <laughs> you just survived me yapping for almost half an hour make sure you give it a like and let me know that yes you bared me through it and uh, please do subscribe if you haven't done it so far uh, if you want more of these detailed videos please do let me know in the comments below um, and i'd be happy to create them i'd love to share whatever i've learned over the years of using the xfx2 i am still not an expert i'm still learning so that's pretty much it uh, make sure you check the links in the description box as to how you can support me and as always do comment your thoughts and stay safe guys keep rocking I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.